In this video, I'll be explaining you how we can connect our MySQL database to a simulated web application. Nowadays, most companies are using MySQL database, so it's cool to know how we can use it with our simulated application. As you can see, I have some data, and this data is retrieved from my MySQL database. So this MySQL database can either be locally on your machine or it could be on some MySQL server provider. So right now in market, there are multiple MySQL server provider like AWS Cloud, Google Cloud, etc. But those require a credit card even for signing up. We have some alternatives and DB4 Freenet is the server provider that we are going to use today. For this one, we don't require any credit card or anything like that. So it's totally free. And this MySQL server is mainly used for development and testing purposes or let's say for learning. And don't use it for production level because it might lead to crashes or something like that. There are multiple benefits of using a MySQL server for our database rather than uh, using the local database. Uh, like uh, it's more scalable and this uh, and many people can have access to this database or multiple apps can use this database so it's good to have it online and to get started we will go to the database section then get your account so first we have to sign up and give a unique database name so let me try then a unique username and set a password make sure to keep these details safe because we will need them later on After successful registration, you will receive a confirmation email. So just click on the confirmation link. And once done, I can now go to the PHP My Admin section. And now enter your username and password and login. After successful login, you will see a dashboard like this one. Here you can see your databases. This one was the database we created. So if I click over here, see there are no tables in this database because I have not created any tables yet. Either you can use SQL statements for creating the table or you can simply import a CSV file. But if I directly go to import, then my column name would be like cold one cold two by default. So I don't want that. So I will simply create the table. You can create an empty table using the SQL commands like this one. So say use and after that pass your database name. Just learning underscore two one two three four here. Then give a table name after create table and make sure to use these ticks. They are not the inverted comma ticks. These are present below your escape command. So make sure to use them only. After that, inside this parenthesis, pass the column names that you want to set. You can set the parameter default value type. So let's say this one is date type and this one is going to be float type. You can set the length also and other things. So after doing this, I'll simply run go. and our empty table is already created now if i go over here and check it out then you see we have these column names present now i can simply import my csv file and after that just click on import Okay, so it gives some error in correct date. So the date format in my CSV file was a bit different. So, uh, that's why it's saying that, but our data should be 
converted to date format correctly here. Yeah, it's present there. So you can ignore those errors. And if I check it out, then all values are present here. So now our database is created. Now we can move on to the coding section and get the database using my SQL connector. I will create a main.py file and so we will be using MySQL connector for connecting to our MySQL database. So first of all, we have to install it using pip install MySQL connector. This one is already installed on my PC. So now I will just use import mysql.connector. And before going on to the streamlit part, let's first try whether we can make a connection with our database or not. So for building a connection, I'm just creating a connection using connection equal mysql dot connector and dot connect for connecting. Now we have to pass the information regarding our database that we want to connect with. So first thing we have to pass our host name and this host if your database is present locally then this host will be just the local host but for now we are using this db4free.net so this is our host i'll pass its name here db4free.net and then we have to pass the username and the password and the database name that we want to connect Okay, so username is nothing but the name that we used over here. So it was this one code zone one, two, three. I will just pass this username here and the password. I will blur it out. And if you want to hide your password from another user, let's say you want to upload your code on GitHub and you don't want other people to see your password. Then you can use different different methods for Python like .env and I will drop a video link in description also so you can refer that out. And then we have the database name which is this one learning underscore two one two three four learning underscore two one two three four. So this will create a connection with our database. So for checking, I will just print something, let's say connected. So this connected will be printed or running it if connection is successful. Yeah, it's saying connected. I mean, we didn't get any errors, so it's working fine. So if you want to like check whether it's actually working, you can try with a wrong or a different database that doesn't exist for this user. And now if I rerun it, then we will get an error. So now it's working. So after creating a connection, now we will have to create a cursor object. So a cursor object will help us in manipulating the database. Like we can retrieve the data or enter the data using this cursor. So to create a cursor object, we will use our connection and its cursor method. Con connection dot cursor. Now our cursor is created. So the first thing we will be doing is we will be selecting a specific table from our database. As you can see here, we have this time series table which we just created. So if we want to fetch it, then we can use cursor for it. So cursor dot it will execute a SQL command. So we use select star from and the table name which is time series here so we use this sql statement for selecting the data from a table so same goes here now this cursor will execute this sql statement and to check whether it's working or not we can try to get some data from it so for getting the data we will say uh, print cursor dot patch all so this is a method which we use for 
getting all the data inside this table and if i save and rerun it then we should hopefully see the data for our database yeah you can see we are getting a tuple of a list of tuples here with each tuple representing a row so that's working pretty well and now as we are able to get all these details we can move on to the streamlit part now for creating a streamlit website i'm boarding streamlit as st and now here you can see i am showing a data frame in our website and i'm giving some message so just st dot title pass this message for showing the data frame first of all what we can do is uh, we will store this one this information inside a data variable so this data contains all the data of our table and now we can create a data frame with help of pandas so pandas is a most widely used library for doing data manipulation and to create a data frame I can simply create a variable df and use pd dot data frame method of pandas and pass the data that you want to convert into data frame. So here our data is inside this data variable. So I will just simply pass it. So if I simply do this and then the column names won't get printed. So if I want to give the column names also, then I can use the columns parameter of this pandas data frame and for giving the columns values we can use this cursor so i will simply fetch these column names itself and pass them to our data frame columns names so for doing that i have a cursor method for column names so cursor dot column names this will give us the column names that's also Show the data frame using st dot data frame method of streamlit and pass the data frame which is df here. If I save it and create a new terminal, say streamlit run main.py, it should hopefully work. Yeah, it's working now. Our title is set to streamlit MySQL connection and data frame is visible with the column names that we fetched from our database table so it's working fine we can do other things also, also with this data, data. like i can fetch different, different information from the database like let's say i want to write the rows where our let's say sales quantity value is equal to 10 so if i do it and save it then you will see okay so there are no sales quantity with value 10 so it's give a empty data frame and let me just grab uh, this one where sales quantity value is this and if i try for this one now save it yeah now it fetched the row with sales quantity value as this one okay so it's working just fine i can do other things also like in the next video i will show you how we can create graphs or other things with that now this is a real time based database so if i go over here and do some changes then the changes would be visible over this web application also so let me just give you an example. Let's say I want to change this value for this period. So I will just use update, then table name, and set the sales quantity value equal to 10, where period value is, where period value is 2001.03. Twenty and go. 
incorrect date value okay do i have to pass it inside the thing after doing that if i browse browsing again we can see the table value got changed so now we should see a 10 on this row so now if i rerun yeah, on rerunning the website, we see the updated value here. So it's working pretty fine. That was the case for having the server online. But if you want to use the local database instead of a database like this one, then you can simply pass the host value as local host here. and pass your username and password and the database name here similarly and this would work fine if i show you a demo i have my sql workbench installed so you can use this one for creating the databases see here i have a local instance so if i go and create a new database here then i have to give a connection name let's give it tutorial and keep this host and port unchanged and you can give a different username or keep it as it is then uh, click on ok if you don't want to give any password or something like that now if i click on to this one then it's then this database will open and now i can create new tables here and for importing tables i can simply right click over here and table data import user then simply select a table data i'm using this csv file then click on next and it will create a new table or you can use existing table also give your table a name and after that now it will prepare and import the data file then click next and finish now it should hopefully import the table so you can see here we have this time series data and if i click on say if i say select start from time series underscore data use demo and if i run them then you can see my table with its column names got imported here and if i want to make some changes then i can do them here also using the sql commands and for this let's try importing this table in our code so the host is the host is this one 127.0.0.1 for this case you we can all could have also changed the name to localhost or something like that but now it's 127.0.0.1 and the user is root we didn't set any password and the database was demo now if i save it okay so it's giving error demo to time series doesn't exist because our table name is different i think yeah it's time series underscore data so we will use time series underscore data and now save it now check it hmm it's working fine so you can see the table uh, this sales quantity value for this row is the previous value so here on the online database we have its service 10 but in offline mode it's this one so we can create mysql connection with our streamlit website for both of the cases whether your database is present locally or on the server in the next video i will be doing some data analytics work and i will also make a video on on plotting the charts or creating different dashboards in streamlit website so stay tuned thanks